welcome back here, and uh, hopefully we've solved the problem. We had um, a little technical hitch. That's what happens when you go live. But um, I'm glad you've joined me again. Welcome to another edition of your daily dose of your daily boost. And this is your story, Dr. Charles and Deepan. And uh, I'm so glad you waited for us. And we are going to make it what you are. So, but welcome on board. This is another week with great possibilities. Let me know how the sound is and I will gladly make sure we make the adjustments and how the video is also. So thank you for joining me today. It is going to be a great week and before we continue, I want you to share this with as many people as possible. This is a victory week for you. This is a victory week for you. One thing you want to learn is this, that this is the victory that overcomes the world, even your faith. We are talking today about the believer's authority how to access it but before we go there don't forget we have the power school coming up 19 to the 26th of july you need to register for the power school of miracles the theme of the power school is eternity now what it means to be operating in the place where eternity is in your heart operating with eternity in your heart hallelujah when you're releasing eternity into the physical realm. So that's what we want to be talking about in the power school. For a whole week, we have Tom Scarella and Susan Scarella going to be here. We have uh, Courtney Fatland going to be here. We have a lot of great people that are going to be here. You don't want to miss it. You need to register. It is going to be life changing. It's going to be life changing. So you need to register now. Get your tickets. Get everything you need. You want to come here. Best school you're going to attend. I'm telling you, it's going to be life changing. So you don't want to miss that. So I am glad all of you are back on. Share this with as many people as possible. We want to make sure everybody's on. This very week, we have from the 16th to the 17th, we have Authentic Leadership School, Kingdom Leadership Academy. We are going to be having that, and um, we are going to be impacting you with some strategies, winning strategies for leadership. And uh, it is going to be coming up this very weekend, from the 16th to the 17th of April 2021. You need to register, you need to go to psom.org.org and register there. It is gonna be glorious. So you need to register ahead of time so that you can join us across the globe, across the globe. And for those of you that sowed a seed last week for your uh, special pro, um, package, we're gonna be sending that to you next couple of hours. Hopefully we get everything together and make sure you have that available. And maybe I can give this as an, another opportunity for those of you that are, maybe that missed last week's opportunity is called the uh, Fourth Dimensional Living. Fourth Dimensional Living is a free package we want to give to you for investing in this ministry. And I want to say thank you very, very much for being a part of this. So we're going to keep this a little bit this week and add something to it as you sow some seeds and are part of it. And hallelujah. And I see Mary Johnson, Pastor, we have Dr. Brian Rubin, Kelly, all of you are back on. Thank you for indulging us. We had a slight glitch with the audio, but it's been fixed and we are back on now. Thank you for joining us. So um, we are going to be talking about the believer's authority. What it means to operate in authority. What it means to operate in authority. Most Christians do not understand what authority is. And we're going to be dealing with that. Understanding authorities. Understanding not just authority, but understanding authorities. We're going to read a verse of scripture um, that gives you a better understanding of what we are talking about today. This is from, um, we're going to look at um, a, a few scriptures to get started about authority. You go to uh, Matthew 28 verse 18, the Bible says, all power has been given unto me. I'm, the reason I'm reading that is for, I want to bring some clarity. Matthew 28 verse 18, I want you to look at that scripture and you understand what authority really is. What authority, I see Monica, I see Dragosh, welcome on board. Thank you all for joining me again. Thank you. You know, sometimes when you go live on uh, TV and you go live on Facebook, you have a few glitches, but um, I'm glad you can, 
you can uh, indulge us and uh, we, can, we can get back on track. So we go to Matthew chapter 28 verse 18. It tells you all power and authority has been given to me. It says, go ye therefore and preach the gospel. It tells you all power and authority has been given to me. Power and authority. We're going to be reading a few scriptures and moving it as quickly as possible. I hope we are able to get the scriptures up today. Okay? So, we're going to be looking at that. It says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Authority. I think for a lot of Christians or a lot of believers or a lot of people, they misunderstand the word authority and the word power. The word authority and the word power. We're going to look at another scripture in Luke chapter 4, verse 36. I want to show you how we can miss that. What is an authority? What does it mean to have authority? We are going to be reading a bit about that to help you have a better understanding of that. Luke chapter 36. Luke chapter 4, verse 36. That's what I said. I believe so. And all the people were amazed and said unto each other, what, word, what words are this? With authority and power, he gives order to impure spirits and they come out. It says, what a word is this? Now, let's look at the King James Version for you to get a better understanding of what it says. I said, what a word is this? With authority, it said they were amazed, saying, what a word is this? For with authority and power, he commanded the unclean spirit and the come out. Authority and power. In other words, that scripture is telling you there is a difference between having authority and having power. One is a force, the other one is a delegation of position where you can exercise the power. One is the delegation of position where you can exercise the power. One is force that is released, that can move. For example, let's look at a police, uh, a policeman. A policeman does not have the 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 power to stop a truck in fact the truck can flatten the policeman in a second but because of his authority he now releases a force that when he stands on the road with his uniform immediately those vehicles have to obey no matter how big the vehicles are if not he has the authority to shoot at that vehicle if they threaten his life authority he has the authority, but he does not necessarily have the power. The power. So for him to exercise the power, authority must be given to him. See, you can have the gun, but do you have the authority to use the gun? So in authority, there are different levels of authority, but the same power. Different levels of authority will determine the exercise of the power to its extent. So I'm teaching you this as a basic thing about how do I deal with authority? What does it mean to me? The Bible declares that with power and authority, with power and authority, he commanded the unclean spirit to come out and they came out. What would release such power? authority and that word is exousia in the in the greek for those of you that, that are uh, greek scholars it means exousia it means uh, delegated power and de delegated a uh, position that releases authority that means somebody else puts you in that place to be able to use what you have and then the word used for power there is dunamis it's dunamis. It's a force that is released. It is a force that is released. So there's a difference between power and authority. I'm talking about 
the authority of the believer and then we're going to shift it later on to a dominion lifestyle so authority is always delegated use of power authority is your ability to to be in a place with your position to exercise power you can exercise power if you have the right authority if you have the right authority so now let's look at we're going to look at another scripture that will help give some clarity about what we are talking about authority i want you to look at matthew chapter 8 starting first verse 5 is talking about jesus coming down doing miracles and a man comes to him matthew 8 verse 5 it says a man comes to him it says they came unto him a centurion beseeching him and uh, let's keep reading this i want to read the whole text all the way to eight and saying lord my servant lies at home sick of the palsy and gravely tormented and then he goes on to say he said and jesus said unto him i will come and heal him i will come and heal him and let's keep reading this the centurion answered and said lord i am not worthy that thou shalt come under my roof but speak the word only i want you to pay attention to that speak the word only speak the word only only speak the word speak the word only and my servant shall be healed we are still talking about making your faith work my servant shall be healed and now notice what it says and the centurion says in the next verse it says i'm a man on the authority it says verse 9 it says i'm a man on the authority i'm a man on the authority i want you to pay attention to those statements i am a man under authority you see if you are not under an authority your authority that, that you receive will can easily be abused your authority can easily be abused that means if you cannot relate to being under authority you cannot exercise authority and those are the people that run wild you know a criminal or gangster he's not under any authority that's why they run wild and they can be very destructive but a person that understands authority that's on the authority has the legal right to use that authority are you with me so you have to understand are you under authority because it says having soldiers under me okay think about this now i'm a person on the authority but I have people on the me. You cannot have legitimate authority without being under some legitimate authority. That's the problem with most people. They are authorities unto themselves. They are authorities unto themselves. And that is not a very good place to be. You have to bring yourself under so that you can be over. You cannot be a leader without being a good follower. You cannot become a person that exercises if you do not understand authority now we live in a world today that a lot of people do not understand the kingdom mindset so we bring democratic thoughts into a kingdom living it doesn't work what is a kingdom and what is it not see a kingdom is not a democracy a democracy you see it's not a kingdom it's not a democracy it's not a religion it's not a republic it is none of those things you see normally in a kingdom the kingdom should become an expression of the culture and the nature of its leader of its king or his queen her queen or king those are the things you you, you understand now in the western world when you talk when you when pick people pick up the bible it is in danger of being abused because people do not understand what the kingdom is they don't understand what an authority is and so when you're talking to a lot of people they don't understand authority because they want to impose 
their culture into the Bible instead of instead of having the king's mindset the king's nature the king's culture and his his thoughts expressed through them so they want to make it a republic they want to say well we're going to vote on this in the kingdom you don't vote it is what the king says so you have to be subject to the king to understand authority now of course in democracies we have what we call authority given to the judges to the president a delegated power the difference between the kingdom and a democracy is always the source of the authority in our democracy the power comes from the people up but in the kingdom the power goes from the top down from God down that's why every king wants to believe that their authority comes from God a righteous man wants to believe that God is the one that gave them the authority to take care of people now I'm gonna I'm gonna say some things during this next couple of days that's gonna help you remove when uh, when people can easily abuse the authority that they have because if you have authority is a very powerful responsibility and it can be open to abuses by people so we're going to be straightening some of those things out get your mindset in the right flow so that you now can understand what the kingdom of God is about you see in a kingdom it is is it impacted and influenced by the mind and the mindset of king so you have to understand in the kingdom they they are always there's an order and there's a ranking always in the kingdom it's not like well we are all Christians we are all the same no the Bible says Jesus was exalted he is a king of kings in the kingdom your your exaltation is based on your obedience to the truth so you have to understand what the truth is and we're going to be talking a little bit about the believers authority why would our believers say to our blind eye open and it opens and uh, we will talk about also understanding when it is when you're dealing with a secular world what kind of authority do we have to either listen to them or not to listen to them at certain times you have to check what authority or what is being told you to find out whether it is in line with the kingdom principles now think about during the pandemic of course many people they knew that at the embassy we were always open we were always open and the big question people were asking us didn't they tell you to close <laughs> i always smile and i said that they will say but the, the authorities told it because the bible says that you should listen to the authorities that have been put over you of course we believe that but you have to understand if an authority is not in line with where it comes from something is up Remember, look at, let's look at the United States. Power comes from the people. The power does not come from the Congress. It does not come from the president. It comes from the people. So if the president is going to do anything, he must first consult with the people. You can't have a bunch of um, bureaucrats deciding. No, you've got to go to the source of the power. The same thing in a kingdom if we are going to do anything we've got to go to the source of that power and listen to his mindset and agree to his mindset that's how it works because the power of anything does not come to the it is not from the person that carries it it comes from a higher authority that gives it that's what authority really is authority is delegated power or delegated position to exercise power i hope this is helping you hallelujah <laughs> oh my goodness i see my dear friend and brother Warren. so a lot of people do not understand when you talk about authority the first thing they tell you is well you see i have a right to do this you see when you talk in the kingdom about authority you have no rights it is the king's agenda that must be followed if you say i don't want to do the king's agenda now that is rebellion it's rebellion to the king 
Okay, let's sort things out first before we go on that. This is going to be a whole week of talking to you about understanding what real spiritual authority is and physical authority. So during the pandemic, of course, people were told to close. But then you cannot make rules that favors one and uh, that puts others in disadvantage. If you're going to make a rule, make sure the rule applies to everybody. And that's how, that's what it called equity. So you cannot make certain rules because of certain things in a democracy. It's not going to work. For, for example, why would it be that in some places, some businesses can be open, but not other businesses can be open? Because in both places, there is an interaction. There's an interaction between the people. Now, somebody said, but the authority said. Now, who empowered the, the authorities to say? The power comes from the people in the democracy, but comes from God in the kingdom. So that is the difference. The man said, I'm a man on the authority. And I say to one, to uh, one of the soldiers goes, and it goes, let's look at a scripture in verse 9 of Matthew chapter 8. I'm a man on the authority. And I say to this man, go, and he goes. And I say to another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. Now, he, and he doeth it. Listen to this now. This centurion understood kingdom because they had Caesar. They understood, the Romans understood kingdom because wherever the Romans went, they changed wherever they had conquered into the conquest into a bit of Rome. They gave them Roman citizenship and also they began to teach them Latin. They began to teach them, trying to acculturate them, put them part of their culture so that it becomes an extension of Rome. That is real kingdom. But if just the same way the, the British Empire was all around the world and what happened was if you are in a British, part of the British Empire, you will speak English. And those of us in Africa, we used to remember those days, you know, being part of the British colony, what happened? We will speak English. If you're part of the French colony, you know, you will speak uh, French. And the same thing with the Portuguese, you speak Portuguese. You know, that's exactly how it worked. So they basically would want to transfer all of their culture and the influence to those places. They make it a colony of that place. The, the, you, you begin to, I mean, in Africa, we begin to drink hot tea. <laughs> you know, we began to drink hot tea. It's hot already, but you know, we just drink. We didn't think we could drink some, some cold, chilled tea because the, in, in England, it's cold and they drank cold, you know, hot tea. We drink hot tea. And then we wear some, some suits that is hot. <laughs> you know, we just, because we are acculturating to the mother country. But we do this in a kingdom. In a democracy, we back away. When you talk about independence, that means there is no kingdom agenda anymore. When we come to God, it's a different mentality. Are you with me? So that's when people start telling you things like, well, you know, you don't understand. I can do whatever I want to do. No, not when you come to Jesus. When you come to Jesus, you make him Lord of your life. He is now in charge. And because you are a citizen of his kingdom, you have a right and you have privileges within the kingdom to exercise dominion over demons and everything else. But I hope you're getting what I'm saying. Now, I was talking about what happened during the pandemic and somebody was asking the question, do I just listen to the authorities? I said, we were open. Now, if anyone came here to ask us, why are you open? We are open the same way and the same reason that Walmart was open. Why? Walmart was considered an essential service. And um, the other places were considered essential service. So are we. We deal with the mental and spiritual and physical needs of people in the midst of the pandemic. We, as, as much as needed during the pandemic, that's when the church was supposed to get into action. I mean, I'm talking about the living church now. I'm not talking about just... <laughs> oh, my goodness. 
that, that I'm not talking about the, 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 the dead church that kind of panics when there's a little headache in the house. I'm talking about the living church is supposed to stand up and become the light of the world instead of running around like caring people and hiding and, and uh, kind of struggling. No. Are you opposing? Are you saying we should fight against authority? Didn't the scripture say obey the authority that is in the place? Come on, guys. I know all those scriptures. But also, the, the, the disciples said, should we obey God or obey man when they were told not to preach the gospel? Now, people accuse others, you're being rebellious. The Bible says be, on the, be subject to authority. But I have good news. You are not subject to abusive authority. It's not part of the deal from the kingdom of God. God does not abuse his kids. That's why you are subject to him based on love. It's a willingness to bring yourself under him. You see, to submit to God is an act of your will. You decide, I'm in love with him. I yield to him because he has my interest at heart. You don't go to an abusive place. For example, somebody tells you, stop preaching the gospel. Let me explain to you what we, the world today, calls rebellion and how God sees it. For example, if somebody comes to me and tells me not to preach the gospel, I'm not going to listen to them. I'm not going to listen to them. Why is that? Because anything, what I call rebellion, is when you go against the will of God for your life. That is real rebellion. You are rebelling against your maker. That is what it is. But when somebody now tells you to rebel against your maker, you tell them, step aside. You did not make me. No, 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 no. My purpose for being here must be fulfilled. Hallelujah. Now, sometimes what we call rebellion is just the Holy Ghost rejecting anything that is contrary to our purpose. That's what we call... We, we, it's, it's supposed to be doing the will of God. And the disciples decided they were not going to do that. When you are now subject. When you are now subject. I've heard some people say things like, well, God did this and God put the sickness on me. That is abuse. That is not God. And God will not allow you to be subject to that. Real rebellion is when you know the will of God for you and you reject it and go and live your own life that is called rebellion but when somebody now comes to talk to you about rebelling against God and you say no now that is no rebellion that is being in the right place of dominion and they can do whatever they want to do your purpose cannot be destroyed if you understand what you were born to do they can kill you you become invincible they cannot because you are in the will of the maker the will of god and the will of god becomes a shield around you and when we step away from that and want to appease the crowd that's why it's important your focus is never the crowd your focus is the one who called you who saved you who delivered you who brought you to this place and that's where your focus should be what should i do lord and that was what paul said he said what do you want me to do lord that's what Paul said, Saul of Tarsus. He said, what do you want me to do? That is yielding to his will. Not what would I like to do. You see, and you begin to understand when you come to that place, what would thou want me to do? The moment you do that, his power begins to back you. You have brought yourself, making him Lord, and you can exercise unlimited power. Hallelujah. 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 You see, a lot of times people call rebellion what it's not. Sometimes you're in a place, I mean, it'd be a sad thing being around a leader that does not see what you were born to be. You stay in church and people get abused by it. And they're wondering why they're, 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 they're not reaching out to their potential because people never ask the basic question, what were you born for? All they say to them is, you got to do this, you got to do that, and you want to do what you are born to do. They said, no, you can't do that. No, anything that comes against what you are born to do, it's rebellion. See, when you stand against that, then you're on the will of God. And that is not rebellion. It's the Holy Ghost 
rejecting you being made a slave when you ought to rule and to reign in life. Let's get some things straight. When somebody tells me to go and, and, and do something contrary to what I know the will of God is. I will tell them, nope. They say we're going to kill you. I said, try it. <laughs> I'm not afraid of dying. I'm dead already. So we're going to do this? No, I'm not moved by those things. You see, the only thing that enemy can intimidate you with is what you're afraid of. But when you are born of love, you are fearless. No fear in you. No picture of fear in your spirit because you know what you are born to do in life. Hallelujah. The one who made you is the one who knows what you are born to do. So when you're doing the will of God is to understand you are called for something big. I hope this is helping somebody understand what authority and dominion is. You see, it has to start with how we change our thinking. What the king decide, decides is what you begin to manifest. That is kingdom thinking. It will produce a people that are the expression of the king's thoughts and his culture. Like healing, like prosperity, that is the king's thoughts and culture. That is the kingdom of God. So when you bring authority in that context, you will get a different result. So when we're talking about authority, a lot of people, what they call authority, is not really authority, is somebody trying to exercise lordship that is illegal. I'm going, to, I'm going to look at another scripture to help you. Let's look at this. Um, verse 9, we're reading Matthew 8, verse 9. I hope you can, you can read it with us. It says, And they do it. Go to the next verse. This is what Jesus said to them. And when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed him, Verily I say unto you, truly I say unto you, I have not found so great faith. No, not in Israel. All of Israel, I haven't found a man with faith like a centurion from Rome. In other words, those that are supposed to be the children of Abraham, the father of faith, had no faith. A man that was from outside had more faith than them because this man understood authority and the man said listen i don't want even don't even come in i understand authority authority is released by words authority is released by words you see when you are under the right authority it comes from above down anything that comes from down to the top is called rebellion any instruction from the bottom up is called rebellion instruction from the Head down is called dominion or authority. That's how it's supposed to be. It is delegated by a higher one to a lower one. In the kingdom, there is order and ranking. Can you imagine a policeman? He sees a criminal with a gun. And the policeman will say, freeze. This is the police. And the criminal has to have his hands up. If he tries to shoot, the policeman has absolute authority shoot him to kill him simple and straight and he is covered by the constitution of the country by the president by everyone backing him up and that is what authority really is you have the backing of the one century but how is authority given very simple very simple with words authority is not given by you going through this and just words the Bible tells us many times how Jesus gave authority to his disciples. Very simply. He says, behold, I gave you power. Let's look at Matthew chapter 9. Let's go to, let's go to, let's finish this. For Jesus said there's no much, he said, I've never seen faith like this. And he commended the man for his faith. The man understood his authority. He understood his authority and he exercised his authority. Is this helping you now? Is this helping all of you? Because you need to understand that authority is given just by words. Just by words. I want, I want to get to another scripture that's going to help you understand what I'm talking about. 
How do people abuse authority? Matthew chapter 20. Matthew chapter 20, in verse 25, I'll be showing you something there. Hallelujah. Matthew 25, in the 20 verse 25, it says this, And Jesus called them and said unto them, You know that the princes of the Gentiles, they exercise dominion over people, and they are great, and they that are great exercise authority upon them. Let's keep reading. Let's keep reading now. It says, It shall not be so with you. It shall not be so with you. Listen, the world's way of authority is to exercise dominion. Have you ever been? <laughs> I'll tell you a story. I was traveling one day. I was traveling business class. And I got on this plane with my bags. And my bags were uh, the Louis Vuitton bag. I was dragging them in there. These are the standard bags that you can put in any airplane. Everybody knows that. And they contain very valuable things, some cameras and things that we couldn't just check in. So we have those bags because they have value and they can actually protect what we're carrying. And this lady just looked at me. I don't know whether she wasn't, she, she didn't, she wasn't really excited about me paying a lot of money to fly business class. I don't know. Maybe she was just having a bad day, a bad day. And this lady decided to, to you know, Start harassing me. You know how people start harassing you. And I came with my bags because already the people at the gate allowed me to take the bags. A computer bag and uh, the regular pool bag. And I'm traveling business class. And when I came there, the lady just looked at the bag, looked at me. I kind of figured because she has some issues with her. I don't want to call it a racial profiling or anything like that. I don't want to dignify stupidity by giving it a, a, a label. Somebody having a bad day, and I'm not going to be part of that bad day. Hallelujah. That's how we operate. Hallelujah. So what did I do? This lady looked at me and told me, you can't put the bags there. I said, lady, the bags will fit. She said, no, take all of your things. And I had nice little pieces of things that put in the bag to protect the camera. Camera bags, um, we had lenses, we had um, the, some of the mixers we're going to use for our, our program. And this lady made me take all this bag, all of these things out, and I had to put it in the overhead, and then she realized, actually, I was traveling business class. Everybody was looking in the business class because we were checked in first. And they're looking, and... They were very furious, but they didn't say anything. They were wondering why I was the only one treated that way. You see, what people do to you, you have no control over. How you respond to them, you have control over. So when she saw that I was in business class and she was still trying to exercise her powers over me, I guess she figured out that, well, you know, I'm in charge here because the FAA says you have to listen to the crew. I didn't do anything wrong, but the lady was abusing her authority. She was abusing her authority. I followed everything she said, and even those that they were working with her realized she was off because she only attacked me, but I just kept quiet. I just, I said nothing. I took all my things, and they checked in an empty carrying bag. When she realized I was business class, I sat down, very quiet, didn't say a word. Everybody around me was, was really furious. And the other uh, stewardess that was, that was there came and said, I'm so sorry. I don't know what got into her. I said, don't worry. It's okay. He said, do you want anything? I said, nothing. And they, now they were feeling guilty. The people sitting around me were, were furious, but they didn't. Everyone's trying to mind their own business. And I just, they were surprised how I carried myself. I would have stood up and started yelling like everybody. Come on, we have class. We are of the God class. I just sat down there and I said nothing. And then they started offering me extra this. I said, no, no, I'm, I'm not hungry. I'm fine. Don't worry about it. You know, I didn't show. You see, I was never ever going to dignify somebody's ignorance with a reaction. No. I understood when somebody was trying to abuse. And I wasn't going to be part of that. I followed what she said. 
all through the flight, they kept coming to me, are you okay? Really apologize. I said, it's okay. I, she's, I have nothing against her. Maybe she just had a bad day. And they were very surprised. They were very surprised. When I got, when we got to the, to the end of the flight, on that flight, now I had to gather all my things. I had to wait for them to bring the bag to the side of the plane, and then I walked in again, put my things in there. I said nothing. Everybody was just looking at me. And then I noticed the lady began to cry. The one that was the abuser began to cry. She, she comes up to me, oh, oh, I'm so sorry. I said, it's okay. I said, maybe you were having a bad day, but um, I'm here to help you. What can I do to make your day better? I said, what you did was, uh, wasn't, wasn't something I was expecting. When I came on this flight, I wasn't expecting to have my things all over the place. See, how you respond to people can win their hearts. You don't want to win arguments, you want to win hearts. And I said to her, I said, it's going to be okay. Your day is just going to be fine. Don't worry about it. I said, what you did is okay. Um, it, it doesn't ch really change what I'm called to do. My purpose is still intact. I just walked away and not an issue. Everybody in the plane, they're coming to me and they're, they're like, wow, who are you? It was a testimony of Jesus. They were watching to see who I was. And at the end of the flight, everybody come and said, you are an amazing man. I just said, they said, what do you do? I said, I'm, I'm just going to preach in the city. That's why I came. And they said, oh, you're preaching it? You're a preacher? I said, I'm, I'm, I'm a king. <laughs> you know how we answered them. And they were just like, wow, you, the way you acted. No, people don't act like this these days. I said, well, you see, the, my case is different. I said, I love Jesus. And Jesus was not rattled by what everybody else did. I'm focused on my mission. I came to the city to be a blessing to the people. I didn't come here to have a fight with people in the plane. No, I stay focused on the mission. In other words, never allow people's abusive uh, uh, acts to you shift you away from what you were born to do. Never allow those things take you away from your mission because you have, an author you have an authority they don't know. Do you know that same woman? I would have blessed her from the beginning of the flight and she would have had a great flight. But she missed that moment. But at the end, I just had compassion on her and I blessed her. And that, that's how you handle business. You don't let people get to you. You see, we are talking about dominion now talking about understanding your authority now jesus said let's look at that scripture again it says the the, the non-believers they like to have authority over people but it shall not be so with you but whosoever will be great among you let him be your minister let's keep reading that now let him be your minister and whosoever shall be chief among you let him be the servant in the kingdom, the up way is service. That's the kingdom. That's the kingdom. You serve people. How do you serve people? By helping them discover their purpose and fulfilling their destiny. Helping them discover purpose and helping them fulfilling destiny. A person that helps you discover your purpose and helps you fulfill your destiny, you will always listen to them. You will submit to their authority but a person that is abusive to you there is something in you that says no don't listen to this one because the Holy Ghost is in charge of that hallelujah you see you are called to do big things you are called to do big things don't allow what people do affect you you are called to do big things my dear friends you are called to do amazing things I hope this is helping somebody understanding authority you see, you're supposed to manifest the nature of the king. You are a partaker of his divine nature. Nature is called kabod. That's what it's called. It means the glory. You're supposed to manifest for the glory of whoever you're listening to. But most people don't understand that. Most people don't know that they are supposed to manifest the glory of... You see, do you know that the pe people you listen to... They control your future. If they don't believe in your dreams, you're going to be there. And after a while, guess what happened? They discard you because they have used what other people have invested in. And when they're done with you, they're done. But when you come to a place where people can see potential, can see 
possibilities. They can see your purpose and they can enhance your posterity. You need to lock in with them and stay there and grow and glow and shine and impact the world. So we are talking about understanding authority, how to have it and how to exercise authority. You know, most people do not understand authority, so they just think authority is like, hey, you come here, oh, you go there. That's not authority. <laughs> you, see, you see, you can yell and scream, that's not authority. Sometimes in the real exercise of authority is in your quietness, you just say, go. They go. Why? They yield to you willingly. See, when Jesus said to me, go to the world, I just obeyed because of love, not because of fear. So you cannot really exercise real biblical authority based on fear of the one that is being told to do things. They should come to you on the basis of love. They should come to you. You see, perfect love will cast away fear. Why am Paul, why did Paul say, Paul? A love slave of Jesus it was love that made him to become a servant not fear when you when you have fear that's slavery but when you have love that is freedom you now go and you can perform in ways that people don't understand I hope this is helping you hallelujah you are called I see here I bless you you are called to do great things for the kingdom of god i hope this is helping you because we are going to be dealing with a subject of authority all through this week i hope that's a good topic for you <laughs> well thanks to mr solomon <laughs> he, he got me into this now so <laughs> you get to get the benefit of the teaching that was giving him i said i one of the things you have to understand is this when you see people being abusive and they're trying to force you to do things that is not the right authority or if you're forced to do things against what your purpose is you are being against what you and you say no you're not being rebellious you're just standing in line with purpose but when you are rejecting what you're called to do to do something else that is called rebellion rebellion because can I tell you God never designed see if I have if I am exercising authority is because I am exercising authority for purpose you obey not me you obey the truth that's what you obey you obey the truth you obey the reality of the king's words that's what you obey not just me you follow me as I follow Christ you understand what I do in line with his purpose on this earth that's what it is and it's my joy to, for you to grow and to to flourish so that you can do big things so when you have people come to you and begin to tell you you don't you, you don't have this you're this and they try to tell you things contrary to his plans and his purpose for your life and those people don't know what it is and they're trying to put you in their nice uh, sweet religious boxes <laughs> i call it sweet because to them they love to limit the unlimited one in you so what do you do first thing you do is you ask the question is this in line with what i was born for is this what i was born to do is this what jesus told me to do if it's not my dear friend don't hang around me if i tell you to do something contrary to what you were born to do i'm here to train you to raise you to become the best version of you that is my mission when you are successful i get my benefit out of it because one other life to impact others you become a light to the world my thing is to make sure i take off all of the things that will cause your light to dim so that you can shine bright make an impact in the world that's what this is all about hallelujah so i hope this is helping you see most people don't understand if you are in a place where there is constant fear to obey, walk away from that. Because you can have fear and love in the same place. You see, reverence for the things of God is one thing. But being afraid against your conscience, against the purposes of God, something is wrong with that. So you have to stand and back, tell those people to back off. Hallelujah. Uh, when the people tell me, you can't preach the gospel, uh, I remember those days, they would tell me, well, you, this is in rebellion. I say, uh, to what? 
I'll tell you that story. You see, God called me from Nigeria, told me to come to the United States. No church in America called me, so they, they, I, I wasn't expecting anybody to say, well, we are the ones that did. No, I came because the king himself sent me. I didn't just get up and leave. I, I wanted to study engineering, get a PhD, and mind my own business. And then the king showed up in my life and changed my world and made it so beautiful, so amazing. He said to me, give up your little dreams and take on my big dreams and I will take you around the world. Give up your small dreams and take on God's big dreams. He said that to me, and I was like, me? I don't qualify. He said, there's no one like you. So I came to the United States, and then when I came here, we know, we want to serve and be part of the body of Christ, and people start feeling threatened. Now, then, then, then they start trying to bait me, but first of all, I come to a meeting, and when God, I, my heart is to serve. So when God starts moving in a meeting, they start getting jealous. There was no reason for that. I, I'm not looking for opposition. I don't want to be a pastor of that church. No, I'm not interested in that. I have a mission from the king. I don't want to be, I don't want to pastor that big church. I don't want to pastor this. No, I know my purpose. I'm not interested in titles. I'm not interested in things that I was not called to be or to do. So, they started getting a little jealous because People were telling the testimonies, oh, Charles said this to me and it happened. Charles prayed for me and I was healed. And he just spoke a word, my life has changed. And then they start now attacking me for no reason. All I was doing was doing what I was sent from headquarters coming through Nigeria to come and do in America. And they start saying now, well, this is in a rebellion. They came to my house when we were having just a get together with non-christians jewish guys that came to get saved and they started let me give the story very well because they had no sunday night service so we decided to open up our home back in elmara new york for others to come and be blessed we were just in our early 20s and we figured our house belongs to God and if people that are hurting are in the community you can come there and meet Jesus and experience his wonders that's simple we're not trying to build a church we're not trying to do anything no all we wanted to do become an oasis for hurting people in the community and that was what we were doing you see guess what happened all of a sudden because they heard about what was happening and uh, they wanted to come because now, they started having a Sunday night service that they never had for years that we were there. For like two years, they never had Sunday services, Sunday night services. But the moment I started having a meeting at home, it wasn't a Sunday service, just a meeting, make some food, people come to eat. All of a sudden, they, come, they, they had their own Sunday service, but no one was coming. So they thought that the people in the church... We're coming to my meeting. They were not coming to my meeting. In fact, I will kick them out of there. I tell them, go to your church service because this place is not a place to just do church. No, it's an oasis. We want to love on people. And then what happened? Here comes the story. Their Sunday service, I'm giving you a real story. We have people that can verify it. People were not coming. They were coming to our Sunday hangout time. I mean, we were just early 20s guess what happened one day <laughs> some henchmen enforcers this was the pastors back then you know like what my friend um rodney Howard brown always said is it a prince of palace and power some of them are pastors <laughs> they are they are the ones that stop you from doing what god has called you to do in fact they'll block you from fulfilling purpose craziness you know guess what happened they came in the trench coats, came in the knocked on my front door, big door. I was like the gate of heaven. I opened, and lo and behold, three henchmen arrived at the door. And they walked in, and the first thing they said to me was, this meeting is in rebellion. <laughs> I smiled. I said... <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I said, what? I said, 
So they looked around, because we had a very big, big place in Elmira, New York. They looked around to look for their church members. There were none. They were all strangers to them. And they were, there was a Jewish man, a young man, there was a drug addict, came to that place to meet Jesus. And he was the one that stood up and said, what are you guys talking? Because they were saying, we need to shut this down. We need to shut that down. Are you going to shut down a moment where people want to meet Jesus because it's in rebellion to your agenda. <laughs> so, typically, what did I do? I said, oh, coming in, coming in, gentlemen. He said, this is in rebellion. We ought to shut this thing. I said, oh, would you like some tea or coffee? <laughs> they looked at me shocked. I wasn't upset. Why? Why, get, why waste your emotional capital on nonsense? When you can just smile. Why? I didn't come all the way from Nigeria to come and play church games. I came with a purpose from headquarters to come and minister love to people in America. That was my mission and I wasn't going to lose sight of it. What am I saying? I'm talking about understanding authority. I was not in rebellion to anything I was going to do. Those days, we'll go to Cornell University, miracles would happen. Thousands of people were being impacted. Mansfield University, Cornell University, Ethica College, all around those places. Corning Community College. We were going from campus to campus. Things were happening. On Sunday evening, we'll have a meeting at home. Just to get people that are in the local place to get blessed. Guess what happened? And when this happened and they came in, I said, please sit down. And they were fuming that I had a Sunday night service. And I was like, would you like coffee or tea? <laughs> and so I told Pastor Donald, let's go. And there was a no, no. And they're looking around. And this young Jewish man that was a drug addict that came to get saved, got up and began to defend us. Are you guys a cult, he told them. Are you the? I said, don't worry, young man, relax. He was more on fire trying to defend us than anybody else. <laughs> See, let me teach you something. When people get, get all upset and everything, smile. You have a winning smile. Just put that smile and they get confused. You see, Satan wants you to get upset. Do you know the last thing he ever expects is laughter and smiles from you. Make him mad with a nice smile across your face and smile. And you say, well, I can smile. My smile. Just smile anyhow and the devil will be in trouble. Guess what? When they came there and they were telling me, I was, and when they realized no church member was there, they kind of looked kind of silly, you know, realizing that I didn't do anything wrong. And then they told their people not to allow me to come to church. I, was, I helped build half the congregation there. I'm not, I'm not interested in that. And the next thing, I had a meeting. They told me, you, we have to have a meeting. Well, I figured I was going to do one-on-one. -on -one, but what happened? <laughs> I'm talking about authority now. What happened was, they had a council of people sitting around. And I sat like this in the middle. And all the pastors sitting around me. Of course, they were older, way older than I was. And I respected them. I always am respectful of people. That's called class. Understand even when people are dishonoring, just don't allow them or give them the satisfaction that anything they're doing is affecting you. Why? You come from a higher dimension. Don't allow them to get to you. Because when they do that, then they think, well, we are making an impact. No, smile. They don't know why you're smiling. And the devil doesn't know why you're smiling. It actually confuses the devil. It actually confuses the devil. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> I see my daughter says, a smile a day will keep the devil away. Hallelujah. <laughs> it's, it's hilarious. So they sat down and after we're done and they realized it was a big mess, they went back and uh, hallelujah. They said, told me I could come. When I came back to the church, they didn't want me to come. There. I said, it's okay. You see, I respected their authority in their building. When I went there and they told me not to come in, I said, okay, I just wanted to come and fellowship. I thought you guys were not upset the other day. But they told their people, don't let them in. I said, okay, it's okay, it's okay. Why is that? I respected their authority in their place. But they didn't understand that my home was my space. But they came into my house to disrupt my family time with people in the community. 
You see, you cannot operate in full authority if you don't understand your own authority. You have to be under authority to exercise authority. A lot of people would rather come to you to exercise their authority, but never, never be subject to authority. So I learned something, hallelujah, that, you see, when people are saying, they're talking to me, I look at them and said, first of all, if you gave birth to me or if you created me, if you saved me, if you're making a direct impact into my life, knowing my purpose and destiny, I'll listen to you. But if you just come across the, the, the street and come, you maybe come to prophesy to me. To, I mean, you want to hear some crazy things. They were actually using prophetic words to get me to go back to Africa. <laughs> it's crazy. They said, oh, there's a black man here. Well, there were two black men in the whole church. <laughs> there's a young man from Africa there's only one hallelujah two black men one from Africa so I figured they're talking about me but they didn't call my name so I decided hmm okay I guess because after the service people come and ask me are they talking about you I said I don't think so they said but I said a man from Africa you're the only one from Africa in this church I said they didn't mention any name there must be somebody else <laughs> I wasn't gonna feed into that craziness <laughs> oh my goodness you know, I just, you've got to make light of stupidity or you're going to go crazy. Don't take things personal. You know who you are. One of the things that helped me was I had a clear sense of my identity, number one. Number two, I had a clear sense of my value. I knew who I was. No one could add, take away who I was. Hallelujah. And the third thing is I understood my purpose. There's three things in understanding your authority. It'll help set you in the right path you understand where you come from your origin you come from god number two your purpose and your value you no know, your, your value you are exactly what god paid for you are what jesus dying for nobody can diminish you they might talk you down they might say things about you smile they don't know anything about you if they knew about you they will celebrate you some people will look at your past and the thing that's you was your past you see if they look at your past they will walk away from you but if they could see your future they will never leave your side that's what I'm talking about go with the people that see your future and your destiny if they don't understand walk away from them it's not rebellion stay with the people that believe in God's dreams in you hallelujah 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 that's what I'm talking about today <laughs> so what did I do I came there and the people were having prophetic words like God is saying you should go back to Africa I said I didn't get that memo I was thinking it I couldn't say it you know respect them they're prophesying this are they hired prophets that came to prophesy to me <laughs> you know they bring them in specifically to come and shake things up in the church but I wasn't doing anything unscriptural I was on the word going out ministering to people not getting involved in their sphere of authority now for you to operate in authority you must understand that your authority ends with other people's authority begins in other words know the sphere of your authority i cannot go to another church that i did not start that i did not they have not submitted to me and speak there if they invite me there i will go and listen to them and if they want my input, I'm going to put it. Because they are built on somebody else's foundation. My place is my place. I will never use up other people's authority. Even if I know, if they need me, I will help them. But I will never go and say, that pastor's wrong. I'm going to take over. That's, that's childishness. Come on. Grow up. You see, you've got to understand things differently. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Oh my goodness. You see, you want to be in a place where the people know what you carry. I see Michelle says, stay in the, in the place where people celebrate you. Say, stay in where you're celebrated, not where you're tolerated. You want to be in a place where people believe in what God has called you to. So most of the things people go through, I've been through those things. And I always smile when they tell me, well, they said this to me. I said, welcome to the club. They said that about Jesus too. I mean, in fact, read the Bible. John, John chapter, um, I think John chapter 9 a man was being kicked out of the synagogue because Jesus healed him. Well, that happens. You're not the first one that has been kicked out of a place. But also, don't be rebellious when the people are trying to help you. Make them be, make, make it a joyful thing for other people to help you grow. In other words, I said to our guys at the embassy, 
I said, you, you guys make pastoring fun. Pastoring without tears. I, every, every service, after we're done, we don't leave for another three, four hours. Service is over. No one wants to leave. You got to turn the light off and kick some people out. Pour water in them. So, no, I'm just kidding. We don't pour water on people. We're close to that. Go home. They love each other. They love fellowship. And for a pastor, that is joy. The Bible says, make it easy for those that are pastoring you to pastor you with joy. That's where it's supposed to be because when you, when they, when they believe in your dreams, what God has called you to do, they know what you're called to do, and they're bringing that up, of course, you'll be submitted to such an authority, and then you will grow and grow in grace and in knowledge. I hope that this is helping you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. I'm too excited today. Oh, this is just the first day, and uh, I could tell the stories of the stories, how things changed when the people cannot stop what God has called you to do. Guess what happened? They will join you and start clapping later on. Hallelujah. It happens. But we never advocate for people to become, to go to a place to go and scatter things when people are building. If you go, when we started uh, the ministry, we started the churches, we never went and took people from other churches. We are soul winners. We went, started winning souls, getting fresh people, and then people came because they were sent. We don't go try to destroy other people. No, God cannot bless a thing like that. We go to rescue those that are rejected, those that are hurting, that those that nobody wants to take care of. We say, come home here and we're going to build you back up. It's our place to minister love that heals a hurting world. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Divine, divine, divine. You have to redeem yourself for the purpose of business. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh my goodness. I love, I love, I love you guys. Now, listen to me. Now, do you guys want me? I, I'm going to teach authority probably different from what you have heard from other people. I know the standard thing. You talk about God giving you authority over demons. And, but now I want to bring it to practical things every day. How do I respond? A husband, a wife, a father, a son, a mother, a daughter. How do I respond to authority? How do I grow in understanding authority? You cannot operate. You pay attention to this now. You cannot operate in, through, in true authority if you do not understand the law of honor. You see, it's easy to submit to authority if you know how to honor people. We're going to be talking about that tomorrow a little more. And I, I, I hope that this is helping you. <laughs> I hope this is helping all of you. We want to make sure we make it a fun time this week. And hallelujah, I'm, go I'm going to wrap it up now for a short time. Except if somebody tells me, maybe can you talk on this? And then we'll go for that flow. Is this helping all of you today? Hallelujah. I want you to get ready. We want to give you an opportunity. It's a new week with great opportunity. If you are receiving spiritual nourishment from us, it's the right thing to do by the scriptures. You want to go and become a partner with us, you know, and sow a seed and said, I'm starting this week with sowing seed. I believe in the principles of God's word. It says, every time, Genesis 8.22, as long as the earth remains, it's still out there. Seed time and harvest shall never cease. Every opportunity given, you want to sow a seed. Hallelujah. You want a constant harvest, you want to sow a seed. Hallelujah. It says, while the earth remains, seek time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not see, shall not cease. Seek time and harvest. Seed, time, harvest. If you sow a seed today, it will grow. By the time harvest is around, you will have your harvest. That time will grow it. Hallelujah. Are you with me? A, a seed a day will keep poverty away. So go to Christlove.org and you want to click that button and sow a seed today and said, I want to start this week sowing seed. By the end of the week, I'm going to expect something coming back in. Write your needs and inbox me and tell me this is what I'm believing for and I'm going to pray with you and stand in agreement with you for that breakthrough hallelujah the bible says if any two agree as touching anything it is done this is a week we're going to be agreeing and uh, if you want to do it by paypal go immediately to paypal go to paypal.me slash charles and defund you want to be able to sow a seed and say man of god i believe in you do you know sometimes when you release that seed is the trigger you need 
to get a flow. You see, nothing leaves heaven until something leaves your hand. You see, and also for those, if you want to go by, by um, Cash App, we have the, also the Cash App of Opportunity you can so see. Thank God, these days, we actually have different ways of doing things. I'm just, I was just thinking just a moment ago, those days we didn't have anything like this, but thank God for technology. We can give everybody an opportunity to be a part of this. Cash app is the dollar sign, Charles and Ephraim. Let's get the gospel out. I said to somebody the other day, I said, God really wants you wealthy so that you can make an impact in the world. God does not want you sick and broke. He wants you fully endowed with good things so that your righteousness is known your mercy is known everything you do your, what you do for the king of god is known hallelujah you have dispersed abroad and your your your, your righteousness it's everlasting hallelujah that's what god is saying amen so you want to go there and we have also the venmo the venmo option you see the dr charles dr charles no uh, a hyphen and different you want to be able to do that and get that done. We also have, if you're making up a check, make it out to Christ Love Media. I like that, Christ Love Media. P.O. Box 72800, Providence, Rhode Island, 02907. And don't forget, we are sending also that, uh, what you guys were sewing for last week, the fourth dimensional living, the whole set. And for those of you I mentioned, so $250 and up, Make that as an as an seed to help get the gospel out to the world, and it will be a tremendous blessing to help people everywhere we go. Amen. So you want to go quickly and do that. I see Michael Reza said, "I love you," and I see uh, wait. You want? Should we teach on the Holy Ghost so that you can be filled with the Holy Ghost? That's something you can inbox us, and we can help you out. Hallelujah. I hope you've been blessed today. I hope that you've been able to. Um, Get, get get something out of this uh, we apologize for the audio at the beginning i mean this is a, we have such a high-tech place that if something is not in the right place it's kind of yeah, we've got to call nasa and uh, cause us call the space station to get some things done <laughs> it almost seems like it but uh, our team they're doing an amazing job tell me what we need to improve on and we'll be able to do that amen I want to say I love all of you, Birgit, all of you that are here, Michael, Susan, Mary, Chantel, all of you, and Dragos, hallelujah. I am so happy, hallelujah. <laughs> oh my goodness, we're going to be talking on some of those ones. If you can teach on this, do we all have the power and authority to forgive the sins of others? Of course you do. Are you a believer? Yes, you do have a power and authority. But the thing is, you have to know who God has given you care over. You cannot go to somebody else's ship to go and do that. Now, are they assigned to you? If they assign, that's why I'm very careful when I talk to people. I say, who is the under shepherd? Who, who, who are you submitted to? In other words, if that man is your pastor, talk to your pastor. If your pastor seem seem fit that you should talk to me, I'll talk to him. because. I am go I'm not going to be responsible for what God has not given me. The ones that God has given me, I have a responsibility to. Amen? So that's it. It's called kingdom. It's called kingdom. I just can't go to people that I am not assigned to. I have to know my assignment. That's something you have to learn. You see, the sphere of authority, if I go to a place and they don't want my ministry, I cannot force it on them. The Bible says, go to your feet and move. So you have to know where you're called to be. So I hope that this helps you. I see Loretta, God bless you. God bless you. And Ning, love you. And by the way, you guys are doing very well with the investment in the, in the new camera equipment. We, I mean, we, are, we, are, we still need your help. I told you we need about half a million dollars to get a TV network fully functional. Getting new staff, getting new people, I know it's gonna be a blessing to you, okay? So, but praise God, I'm so excited. You wonder why I'm bouncing around. I am, in, I am so excited about you. Now, if you're interested in mentorship with me, you want to go and look at what's written below. Go to m.me forward slash marjorie.james3762. Check that out. Go in there and you can get, get, get into the mentorship program. Don't forget this weekend, we have the Kingdom Leadership Academy. You need to be registered. It's a closed group. 
just for those that want to go into another dimension of authentic leadership. We're going to be teaching you things that are different from probably what you're used to hearing. We're going to be teaching you something absolutely different. I pray that you can be a part of it and um, we would love to see you there. Okay, so I love all of you. And uh, what one of the things I'm going to be doing is this is I want to make sure that you register for power school. I, I, I'll be doing some interviews to bring some of the people here so that I can share with you some amazing things that they say concerning the power school. Amen. And um, we're going to start also adventures in miracles. A-I-M. It's an aim. Hallelujah. Adventures in miracles. Just talking about miracles that has happened around the world. We'll set it up for you and it's going to be an amazing, amazing time. Okay. I want to say I love you and it's going to be a great weekend. Thank you for sowing seeds today. We're looking forward to seeing you again tomorrow on another edition of your daily dose of your daily dose. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.